Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to edit a HA RGB image. So um, using the hydrogen alpha filter, uh, combining the image taken from that and adding it into uh, a normal color RGB image uh, to give you a, an overall much better image. Okay, so I learned this from um, two different videos. And the first one is um, here from Tad Tadej. I'm not going to pronounce his name properly, but I'll uh, I'll link the video down below. Really good video, and then um, also learn from Astro Backyard with his video. All right, I will take you through, and I'm going to assume that you know how to stack the images um, first. So I'm not going to show you stacking them, but what you'll do is you, you'll take the your normal color images, then you put the filter in. You'll take the H alpha images and then you'll stack them separately so that you have two different TIFF files. And I'm just gonna assume that you've already done that and I'm going to just open them both up in Photoshop. So here is my RGB image and here is the hydrogen alpha images image and as you can see like the, the amount of gas the amount of reds that's in there is, is absolutely fantastic so right, first thing I'm going to do is just very quick edit on the um, RGB image just going to stretch it just a couple of times okay you can see the corners are starting to go here that's where I would normally use RC Astro which is a paid plugin. Uh, you don't have to use it. I just find that it does a really good job. Uh, as you can see there, it got rid of all of that there. Right, so I've just done a very, very quick basic edit on the RGB image. We're gonna go across to the H alpha image and we're gonna go to the channels and we're just gonna select the red channel. And we're gonna copy that and paste it into a new project. So Control A is selecting all. Control C is copy. Control and N is new project. Hit enter on that one and Control and V to paste that in. So that is now our hydrogen alpha gray layer. I'm just gonna delete that back a bit there. What you can do is close this original one now. We don't wanna get confused with all the different tabs open. So I'm gonna close that out. So what we're then gonna do is go back to our RGB image. We're going to go to the channels of that one as well. Select only the red channel and then it's control A, control copy, control new, enter and control V to paste that in. And then what we will do is we will paste over this hydrogen alpha layer onto the red channel layer from our original RGB image and then that's what will make it stand out more. But I'm just gonna do a couple of quick edits onto the H alpha one now. And I just use camera raw filter to do that. Uh, I'm just gonna have a play with Contrast, shadows, whites, a little bit of clarity, tiny bit of dehaze, and that's basically all I'm gonna do with that. You could spend a lot of time uh, in making this look as good as possible, but I think that'll basically do it. It will do for the purposes of this. So there you go, you can see the difference there. What I'm then gonna do then is paste this on top of, control A, control C, and then we're gonna paste it on top of the RGB ch red channel layer. And so Control and V, paste that on top. And what we're gonna to need to do now is to make these two align. So I've, uh, I've moved the camera in between shooting so that I could take the camera off and put the filter in. And so what we're gonna to need to do is get these two to line up. So we need the, um, the H alpha layer to match exactly to the RGB red channel layer. So we can paste that back in and it's, and it's in the right place. So, um, realistically, it's, it's quite a manual process doing this. What you can sometimes do is um, select both the layers, edit, auto-align the layers. Now, Photoshop will either do a really good job of this, do a reasonable job of this, or will just say to you, no, I'm not doing this. It, the, the images don't overlap enough, which is an issue that I've had a few times. So, if we have a look here, though, it looks to have done a really good job. So what I would do is drop the opacity on the top layer so that you can see it through to the bottom layer. Just zoom in with control and plus on the keys and 
you can see that it's done a really good job, but you can move it around. Control and T is transform, and you can see when it's not aligned and when it is, the difference in that. Um, what you need to do is spend a decent amount of time and make sure that it is properly aligned here. Um, otherwise, it will not look right at all when you move it, when you put it back into the uh, the original RGB image. So what I tend to do is I'll do the auto align and then I'll come up here to the warp tool and then do some fine tuning. Maybe put the opacity a little bit further up so we can see it. But if you see, you want to make sure that this is as as close to perfect as possible. And to be honest, this has done an amazing job. I don't really need to do anything here, but I'm just showing you what, what I would do normally, is go through each of these and make sure that the corners, make sure that everything is lined up properly. But really there's not, there's not a lot that we need to do there. It's done a really good job. Control and minus to zoom back out. I'm going to bump the opacity right back up on that layer and then we're going to need to crop it down so that it was the size of the original RGB red channel layer. So I'm just going to crop that down. Could actually do a mask. I've only just, I don't, don't normally do this, so I've only just thought of this. And mask out the corners. I don't know what that's going to do. Not done this before. Uh, okay, right. So flatten that now, and then we're just going to Control A, Control Copy, and we're going to go back to the original RGB image, which is here. Back to the channels. Make sure the red is selected, and then Control and V, paste that back over the top. And then if you select the RGB layer here, you can see the difference that it's made. Uh, and this here is the last point as well, where you could do some. Uh, more fine tuning. If you were to do Control and T transform there or warp tool, if you weren't quite happy, Control and H will hide all those ants, but if, if you weren't quite happy with it, how it's aligned, this would be where you'd change that. But look how it, this is how it looks if it's not properly aligned. It goes really odd. So you, you need to spend the time, make sure that it is properly aligned all the way around the image. So once that's done, you can go back to layers and this is the new H-A-R-G-B image. And you can see all the extra gas of the, the color that it's brought through there. Um, what you can then do is go into, um, sort the white balance out would be Control, Shift and A, or just Camera Raw Filter. Oh, what am I doing up there? Hopefully that'll go away. Um, actually, you can see there, that's not perfectly aligned. It doesn't look too bad when you zoom out, but, and then all I do is hit the dropper here, and then you can change the white balance using that. Okay, one more step that Trevor did that the original video doesn't do is to go back and grab that HA red channel that you've made, Control A, Control Copy, paste that back over the top again, select the two layers and go to blend mode and change it to luminosity. And what that will really do is make the, the reds really bright and really stand out. And then Trevor just drops the opacity down to about maybe 20%, 15, 20%. And there we go. From that point there, you would start to edit your image. Um, I, this will take forever if I start to show you editing the whole thing, but but you get the idea. Give that a bit more red. Bring some clarity through. Contrast. Obviously, yeah. So there's the there's the white balance and everything to be sorted out there. And you can see where I've pasted that leather <laughs> image in. So maybe it didn't work doing that. Um, but I can easily get rid of that just with a vignette. So that is very quickly how to combine a HA RGB image. But yeah, you can really see the difference between like the original RGB and then 
adding that H-alpha in afterwards, it makes a huge amount of difference. Um, it is the exact same process if you're um, combining wide field images as well. Uh, and I'll just very quickly show you these wide field images. So this one is my Orion, um, just normal RGB. And then this is using that same process, the um, HA data added back in. So I do find it is a little bit harder with the with the wide field ones for some reason. If Photoshop will auto align, then it makes it a lot easier for you. But yeah, I'm, I'm currently working on HA Milky Way Arch and combining that with an RGB. And I'm really, really struggling to get them to combine together. But yeah, exactly the same process. Um, just trying to find one of my... Yeah, and I'm matching it to that. Right, that is it for the video. Um, hopefully it's helpful and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Take care.